You know, some people can give you that smile that's cute and all that, and it works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> you know, that, that, that cuteness, you know. <laughs> now, all right, how y'all doing? Did you know that God shows up on time? All the time. So, um, this is the third sermon, and this is your life, okay? It's not the TV show, okay? Neither knows what I'm talking about. They don't know over here. Mike knows. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, at any moment, I may interrupt and go in a different direction, okay? Um, there's some things on my heart to do. and um, So, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've been praying hard that the rain would come back, and it looks like it's going to. And um, there is a possibility that we might be having a white February. Um, they're talking Thursday Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, possible snow in the valley. And my prayer is this, that um, I would get up on Thursday on top of the hill I live on, look out, and see everything white. And then I would say, now make us all white. Bring a revival that cleanses the land, and we will walk as purified by the grace and the blood of Jesus. Amen? So let's, let's, um, I'm going to read scripture and start there and go to the book of Acts chapter 5. And this is the third sermon out of this little short chapter, uh, starting in verse 33. Okay? When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Uh, sounds like it's a good start. <laughs> then one of the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamil, a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people, and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourself and what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theotis rose, claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him, and he was slain. And all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. At least you even, in, even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called before the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should speak in the name of Jesus. And let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching, preaching Jesus as the Christ, or I like to call as the Messiah. Amen? So this has been a journey for three weeks. We've been talking through the book of Acts that in the first week it was liberated in life, where they talked about the power of God coming back into the temple and all that taking place. Last week we talked about trial for life, that all of us go through trials and there is a warfare that can come over us. <clears throat> and so in that, now we're talking about God being on time for our life. And what I want to talk about really is just to think about the season and time we're living in and that what may really be going on in the spirit because too often we live in the natural and don't watch what's going on in the spirit realm. Some of you who are on Facebook and on news things and on podcasts and I don't know how it works, TikTok and Instagram and Mommagram or whatever you're on, there's a 
outpouring that supposedly, which I agree is happening, in a small town called Small College. What's the name of that college? Ashbury. Ashbury. In a little town, it's a little college. And they began to have what they, it's a Christian college. They have a seminary there. And they were doing what they have to do, college students there. They don't all have to be there, but they should. And it's a small college, and they're having chapel. And so they do their service, and a young man shares a testimony about repentance. And a few people begin to come forward. The presence of God falls. And they begin to repent, and they've been doing it now for nine to ten days, nonstop, 24 hours a day, people coming in and worshiping. And the body of Christ overall is excited, saying, revival, revival. And I can't deny it isn't for them. But I find that in social media, we'll run to the fastest thing and deal with, oh, yay, we're going to grab it and bring it back. And sometimes you should go, Okay. And so I'm praying that God continue to pour his spirit out. It has moved to other campuses and went to, the, to a place in Tennessee called Lee University. Lee University is a de denominational college of Church of God of Cleveland, Tennessee, which is a Pentecostal campus of which I was raised up at one time in that denomination. I think, well, that's good. Kids are being sent there by their parents and the Christian school, and now they're repenting. But let me ask you this. What about us? What, what about us? What do we want, see? And so I know that some of it is a sovereign move of God. And so look at what's going on here in this little piece in the chapter 5, is that these guys won't quit preaching Jesus Christ resurrected. They will not keep their mouth shut. They keep going after God. They keep getting grabbed hold of, keep getting thrown in jail. They keep getting threatened. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so when this moment in Asbury began to break out, I'm praying on Tuesday, and I said, you know, Lord, you're not a respect for a person. I got the Holy Spirit. I've been baptized in the power of God. I've seen mighty things. I want it. Give it to me. Give it to my congregation. And so we gathered, and we began to worship Tuesday night. I'm on the floor like I like to get down, and I got plastered. I couldn't move. The weight presence of God came on me. And as it came on me, I began to think about what I'm going to be preaching today, and I began to process things and asking God questions. And I realized it was hard to move my body. He was resting on me. But I want to give you a, a moment. We all have a will. And God will not ever override your own will. So this idea that the Holy Ghost is going to come and do something that will make us all different is true, but not true. Because true means He's going to come, and he's going to take every bit of rotten thing in my heart out, and I'll be this new creation, and everything will be free. Not true, because I have a will. Okay? Now, he will come, and he'll ask you to get rid of things. So he'll come and do things. And so here we have the apostles arrested again, Gamil, who is a third generation major Pharisee. His grandfather was one of the best teachers of the word. His dad, Simeon, was even higher up. And that's why they said all the people knew him and they knew where he stood in the Jewish faith. But he had a religiousness over him that blinded him to the very fact that these men are raising the dead healing and believing in a resurrected Messiah that he was trained to believe would come according to Scripture, which he knew. He had a will. And he knew what they were testifying to. But amazingly, he heard and saw the man who was leaping and healed in Jesus' name, and it didn't move him. 
And do you know that I could have right now an angel but stand up behind me and you see him? And he might give me a message to give you right from the throne of God. And you'll go, oh, that's good. I like that. And leave and not have anything change inside of you because you have a will to say yes to God and a will to say no. And he always says, I will never deny, what, a broken, contrite heart. Why? When your heart is broken, your will is broken, you go, okay, God, I can't do it no more. Help me. Bam, it happens. So we have what I pray would be a neat thing to happen in the United States of America, a true revival, a true thing that would sweep across Red Bluff High, and all the kids bound in pornography would be set free. All the kids that believe they're gay when they're not gay, and all the fornication that's going on, and they would be convicted and they would surrender their will. Now, we do know that these guys were watching and seeing the power of God being released. They had to get through their heads, hold it here. We've arrested them a couple times and they won't shut up. And the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, and the Sadducees did not. So they had this war even amidst the religious people. And so Camille had to be thinking, hold on here, they're preaching some of what I'm preaching. There is a resurrection, and the Sadducees said, kill them. So this thinking Camille said, well, hold on here, if we kill them, they might resurrect. Then we're screwed. <laughs> Because they've already preached about one being dead and resurrected. So he was being challenged in his will what to believe. Now, I've read some commentaries, and I, I bounced it off of a, a book. Guy has every book in him, seems like. Um, <laughs> not he doesn't, but some even said that maybe Gamil was one of those guys who really was a believer and kept it secret. Because he didn't, we can't prove it. We get to heaven, we might find out. He might have finally turned. But we're all in the same boat right now as Gamil and the Jews and the Pharisees about a move of God. And it's not by chance. Where are they? They went to a wedding in Vegas. They're not feeling well. We could go on. But the Lord told me this morning early that they, they weren't going to be here. People weren't going to be here. Then he's working his plan. I went, okay. And I did some prayer, and I got just zapped in God. I mean, I'm still a little leper, okay? And he showed me the darkness that's in this place. And I began to intercede and call on God to come, and then it was confirmed to me through someone. This happened to overhear a conversation. You know, I'm going to pray for her in a minute. I just feel like it. Because her ears hear things all the time she's not supposed to hear. He always puts her in a place to hear something. And the enemy continues to blab on his mouth. Or paper comes across her desk and said, oh, yeah, Pangea is coming. Here, you guys pray. We went out and prayed and it didn't come. They're still trying to come. And so we got this thing. I, I want revival. Okay? But you know, revival really means a submission to will. Because, I, 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 and I, I don't know how to say this. We are a charismatic Laodicea church. I got whacked today. The presence of God comes every time we worship in this house. And today God showed me why. I'm here worshiping, and I see the throne of hell up over that building over there in the second heaven. And they're releasing darkness over you at night and day, trying to get you not to go for it. And so when we come here somehow, because when we worship, what you guys didn't realize, when you were singing, you were telling that second heaven, go to hell. And you didn't care that it was there. You just cared about what was above it, Jesus Christ. So we have these encounters with God. We've had mighty encounters with God. We've had miracles upon miracles. But it's like, well, we can come when we want and get it when we want. There is no want. Because, see, that guy up there in the second heaven, he ain't stopping. He wants your kids, your grandkids, and your future great-grandkids. He doesn't stop. 
And he knows that we have a will. And if he could rock you to sleep, even the midst of the presence of God, he wins. Because he's just scared of what might happen like at a university. And it's popping up and people are worshiping. And I'm not putting any of that down. But my heart is, well, why wouldn't you worship them already? So you have to have some hope and encouragement to do it? Okay, that's all right. Do it as long as you're doing it. But once you get saved, once you get saved, I know, I thought the glory was here. <laughs> yeah. Once I got saved, I, I can't help but worship. I can't help but go for it. See, we, we call for revival because we're not Christians as we're called to be. I was destined for hell, and then you get up to my age, you realize how great it is you got delivered. Amen. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to tell you is there's a will going on in this passage. And, and, the, and there's a choice of they're going to kill. Now, God steps in and showed up on time and saved, saved the apostles, okay? He showed up on time. He had a plan. He wants to show up in your life. But you know what on time is? Every day. He doesn't like, okay, I, I, give me a Sunday, I'll show up and then go out and do your thing. No, every day. Because, see, we joke around, but I, I got saved again this morning. Now, I was saved before I entered in, but I got more saved. How's that? Because I surrendered more of my will. I asked for more freedom. I asked, okay, God, he showed me the battle over this house. He's going to do something here. He's going to keep doing stuff here with you or without you. Now, I vote with you because I voted me in. <laughs> I'm not going to give up, okay? I'm reading a book about a guy that, that – uh, um, no, don't relax. <laughs> that there is a, uh, he, he calls a pioneer spirit that's being released over America and the church. And pioneers are ones that go into a dark place and they don't matter what, they won't quit until they see the breakthrough. God gives them a heart for a city, heart for a place, and they just won't stop. And they, they get beat up and they have all these things happen. I'm reading this book and I'm going, yeah. And see, Rebloff is has an identity in the spirit realm called distribution. It was founded by those bringing goods here. Over 100 paddle boats would come up and dump all their goods here and distribute it all over Northern California. Okay. And they had 100 brothels and bars here, and they took the girls up to Texan Springs and took care of the babies, and they had a bloody island here where Kit Carson killed hundreds and hundreds of Indians in the worst massacre he'd ever been a part of, to where he said, I'll never do it again. Here. See? There's something here. And that thing up there says, don't go for it. Don't surrender. And so the Lord showed me our leadership team and said, many of them have suffered mightily in staying here and not backing up from the vision. Can I, I can give you a, a deal. This church is not about the pastor who started it or the pastor who leads it. This church was started by God for a reason to do something that when the guy heard to do it from God had no idea what the heck he was doing. But as time goes on and some people are slow to get things through their head, if he does it here, he can do it everywhere. Because you have no idea the things I know about this place. But God is bigger. 
and he's about ready to do it. But you have to have a will to surrender. And so what he showed me is each member of this leadership team just about have all had warfare and things happen around their families that has caused great pain in them, great defeat for them. And they've been challenged like Peter and John. Shut up, back away from what God called you to do. So he told me to do something whenever I feel led. So I'm going to bring slowly different people up and I'm going to pray over them like I did J.D. and Jessica. And because they have paid a price. And they didn't even know why they were paying the price and didn't even understand how big the battle was. And they didn't understand except they stood and didn't back up. Okay? So, I wish everybody would be here, but they're not. But I'm going to do what God told me to do. So, Donna, why don't you step up right here for a moment, please? And Al's at work checking food out. And hope he's checking it out and not eating it out, okay? <laughs> okay? And so, because Al and Donna have gotten married, that especially in Al's life, there was family that was here. And there was a war over that. Right, Donna? And it's really a burden on Al's heart. And since you're one spirit with him, we are going to agree together that while I hope he doesn't fall out like Al does at the cash <laughs> register, if we get, <laughs> if we, <laughs> may it be, God, may it be, may he fall on the floor. <laughs> Amen? But do you agree? Do you agree that he stood even though he's gone through hell? And even though that, everybody gave up on him. And he even gave up on himself. <laughs> but today, God says, no, you and him are going to be filled with the glory of God because you stood. Amen? Would that be okay? So I have an idea. Why don't you just kind of lift your hands to the throne in heaven, and we're, we're going to talk to you who say no, but we're talking to God Almighty who has said yes. And in the name of Jesus Christ, all that's ever been broken over your marriage, over his life, and in this walk, we begin to be filled. Now, there's one thing by your will you get to have. You ready? The glory of God. Now come and fill her and now in the name of Christ Jesus. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Shadate. Whoa! Glory! Fill her. Cool. Cool beans. Let her have it, Brandon. That's good. So back to the sermon. So, there's a will that was being released there. It was the will of God for Peter and John, and he, he was able to manipulate the darkness and said, I'm Lord here, and fill a man's mouth. To keep the movement of God going. Amen. And so with that, I said, Lord, is it going on today? This is like, oh, this is, you know, first century stuff. Now, I know this is going to be offensive, but you know what? Um, this sensation movement that came in the church in the 1800s that has perpetrated the church that the Spirit of God doesn't do the same things anymore is a Pharisaic spirit that says no to the movement. It's already started, and there's already people hammering the movement in Asbury. Okay? But I'm saying is, no, there are brothers by the blood of the Lamb, but we're not going to deny the full power of the Holy Ghost. And that full power will be seen in the end days for sure. But it's the same type thing is that it doesn't match what we think or feel in tradition, therefore we throw it out. <coughs> I'm not supposed to do this in the middle of a sermon. I'm not. 
But it doesn't matter what anymore, what we think we need to do. So here's this guy telling the men of Israel, hey guys, take heed to yourselves. In other words, there was a fear over him as, uh-oh, if this is God, we're in trouble. If we kill these guys like we killed their Messiah, because remember back a few, few verses back, they said, you guys killed him. Remember, he accused them. You killed this guy. So you know Camille's going, okay, they, we locked them up and somehow they got out of jail. We can't explain it. Remember the verse last week. And remember I told us, all of us are on trial right now for the walking in the spirit. And the enemy wants to accuse you and beat up on you and do all kinds of things. No, it's time to know that the God of heaven sits over that kingdom of darkness. And God's kingdom is greater than their kingdom always. So he shows up on time. How many of you here were meant for hell when he showed up? See? All of us. But somehow, he used someone, somewhere, some way, and got us to hear his voice and say, yes, Lord. He showed up on time. But isn't it time for him to show up again? On time. He's doing that right now for Donna. Yes, Al's on the ground. It's breaking news. <laughs> and what I'm trying to say to you is, I really believe we're about ready for something big. And this is what I'm hearing. It's great what's happening at those colleges. And I know of other places, are, they're having special services now because they want revival. And we were in a prayer group on Fridays that's scattered around the country. And the leader said, I began to get judgmental towards these churches, uh, the church I'm in, that, oh, we're in revival now. So we're going to add some extra meetings. And what it was is they're just hungry for more. They're, they're, nothing's happening. And that's okay. And, and God rebuked him. He said, well, at least they're chasing after me. If they chase me, they'll find me. Okay? So churches are doing it, and they're doing out of zealousness for it, rather than saying, God, just come. And when you come, then they will start. See? Here, he comes, but we can't manufacture the Shoshana glory. You can't manufacture the glory. You can be hungry for the glory. You can have experiences with the Spirit, but that doesn't mean you have the glory. And it was so clear when I listened to David Hogan a couple weeks ago, is that he's seen dead rise, limbs grow, leprosy removed, blind eyes open, Demons cast out, and that was just church. But when the glory came, for two and a half hours, nobody moved, and they're on the floor. So there's a difference, and I talked about it Tuesday night. We've had experiences upon experiences, but when Moses went to the tabernacle in Exodus 40, he couldn't enter in because the glory cloud came down. Well, what the dickens was going on on the mountain in Exodus 19? He was up on the mountain with God for 40 days and came down shining in glory. What was the difference, ready? What was the difference between Exodus 19 and Exodus 40 is they built a tabernacle. What was it? God said, I'm going to come live with you now. See? So we get... We're, we're in a charismatic church where I know you, I can pray for you and something might happen, but that isn't the fullness. There's more and more and more from moment to moment to moment and a moment, and we're transformed in the likeness of him. So this battle is going on, and this guy says, hey, look, these guys raised up, and it fell. So my heart would be, as I know certain churches are starting things up, that God would fall on those churches. In their zealousness and their hunger, God would fall on them. Because we don't want the testimony that's in here about two men who were not saying they were the Messiah. Okay? We don't want that for churches. So I pray that different churches who are going after God, that he would fall. 
but because we don't want a, a Judas and Theodos moment, as it says in these verses, that they thought they were of God, they killed them, and it just petered out. So we have to stand and pray for our brothers and sisters who are hungry after it. But we've got to say, okay, God, who are we? Who are we? What are we going to do? I, I, I got the answer. Ask for the more. Ask for that we would be what we're supposed to be in the kingdom of God for God's glory. Each church, each has its own mission. Okay. Um, could uh, could uh, Joy and uh, Amanda Lee come forward, please? Brandon's going to get overflow of pretty soon. <laughs> Come Holy Spirit, have you not paid a price to be here? Have you not seen the pain of things happen in your lives, not only personally, but within your families? And do you believe that God has told you to stand here and serve for whatever God wants for you? And so therefore, if that's true, and I believe God's glory wants to come, here it comes. The glory of God is coming. More, Lord. Relax and breathe. Because you've gone through the desert time, he says. Because you've gone through where hope was almost taken away. Where everything was gone. And it looked like you were going to be totally discarded by everything and everyone. The Lord said, because you stood, I'm about ready to give you something. He said, not, but you've got to give me your will. Not to pastor, not to Zion, but to God's glory. Bring it, Father. Bring it. So right now, the gift that God has given me, an impartation of the glory that is meant for the next generation, I say receive the glory. And may the fire of heaven burn in you now. And may the glory of Jesus fill you now. For the fullness, as you submit your will to him, fire of heaven be released. More. I heard the word, Shoshana glory. Shoshana glory. Hallelujah. To that core of your being, for the call of your lives together. There's something God's going to do as you grab each other's hands. There he is. Oneness of heart. Shoot. 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 There it goes. Shout out that day. Here I go. Very soon I'm going to be on stage. Hallelujah. Anyway, these guys had the faith. Want me to help you up, Donna? See, the Lord said, the enemy said, wait till everybody's here. To, that way it'd be better. And the Lord said, obey me. So these guys were really struggling, you know. They, they, they said, hey, hold here, um, we got to do something about this. Um, what if this is of God? Isn't it amazing the timing of God? What if this is of God? <laughs> it can't be stopped. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Michelle. It can't be stopped. And everything he has pounded on this week, he says, don't count the failures, count the victories. That's what he just told me to tell you. Because he said, you have paid the price. 
He also told me this morning, you should be on that keyboard by now, but you're afraid to get up there because of the lie. I break that lie off of you right now in Jesus' name. Cool beans. But if it's God, you can't overthrow it. This is how we have to live. The Holy Ghost is coming on you, Rachel. There's nothing you can do about it. It's going to fill you up. It's going to break a yoke as a generation. Shut the hot come by the So anyway, I remember when I got baptized in tongues and I was told not to speak it by the church. I was a da 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 ba da 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 I was a whippersnapper, didn't know anything, and I barely know now. God is doing something in the spirit. It's what he does in the spirit that brings forth victory. As I'm here, and he says, he goes, he told me, everybody that wasn't going to be here today. And he said, I'm warning you, the enemy's going to mock you. I go, okay, cool. Have you been afraid of what you would become in the fullness of the Spirit of God? I have. I'm not going to lie. My whole journey has been one of, Pastor, that's, that's weird. Um, Pastor, you know you're crazy. Um, Pastor, want me to help you, Joe? Because, see, if it's of God, if it's of God, that's all I'm asking about the outpouring where it's happening. Is it of God? If it's of God, let him do what he wants to do. It will be different in Asbury as it's going to be at Zion. It's going to be different as it's going to be in Southern California. It's going to be different because God is so big, he'll match it to the place he wants it to be for the very glory he wants it to become because there's only one reason it has to come. It's to glorify his son. That's it. And so we're here in the spirit. Warring against something that says no. Red Bluff will not see it. But God said he will do it. I'll share Jessica's testimony. She goes, I don't know what's going on, Pastor. I wake up every middle of the night now and I'm praying in the middle of the night. I don't know what's going on. It's God. He's preparing the people. It's God, people. Begin to go after it. All you got to do is go after what you want. He, he's here to answer it today. He's here to break it open today. And because the man said it's God, you cannot overturn at least to be found to fight against God. So when the enemy comes against you and tells you not to do something, you don't have to worry about it because they're fight the enemy's fighting against God. Read, I mean, read Psalm 2. Heaven laughs. God laughs over you, Amanda Lee. Okay? He's laughing. But we never enter into, enter into that joy because we have this thing of oh, the devil. Yes, he's a accuser. Yes, he does things. But you know what? My, my, my life's written in heaven. That's where I'm living. We say heaven. What do you say? When you pray, ask for the will of God of heaven to be on earth. 
What's he saying? The will of heaven is what? God won. <laughs> Jesus won. Ask for that on earth. You know what we do? Oh, that must mean healing. That must be prophecy. It is. But the victory isn't that. It's the victory of Christ. And you start there and you stay there and everything else happens. And that's what that man was prophesying to the church. Can you imagine when Peter and John went back? Yeah, they released it. Guess what? Even Gamil said, if it's God, it can't be overturned. Let's do it, guys. Let's go for it. The enemy will prophesy. And he'll make it really sound like it ain't going to happen when he's just challenging your faith. Well, you know, John, you know, revival really, it's going to come here, but you're not going to get this. You're not, what? He's always bringing chaos. Hey, Brandon, Christy, why don't you come forward? You want to help? You better get your wife, Joe. If it's God, he won't be hurt, right, Brandon? You just don't want him on the phone. Oh, last time, last time, Angel. Angel. Chrissy. Yeah. Since you were 13 years old, you've been coming drinking of this well. Is that true? Yeah. And have you drank of it and drank of it until it took you on the mission field? Yeah. And have you paid a price to be here? Yes. To leave behind everything you thought would be to be answered a call. Is that true? And did God speak to you right here and say, I bring you here not for a husband, but for me? Is that true? Yes. And when you obeyed, did he give you something? A husband. <laughs> I, was, I was sweating that for a moment. Brandon was too. If you've seen Brandon go, oh God, maybe she ain't going to say praise God. Is that true? Yes. yes. So have you left behind family? And has it been easy? No. no. But do you believe God brought you here by the will of God? Yes. Amen. Brandon, has it been easy? No. <laughs> <laughs> has it been difficult to lose friends and family? Yes. Is it difficult to stand in the will of God? And at times it's been easier to run away. And in the times you ran away, did you ever find peace? No. But now that you've submitted your will to the things of God, have you found the peace of God, son? Yes. And do you want the glory yes. for you and your wife? Yes. You hear that? You and your wife. He's the God of restoration for both of you. And so therefore the glory of heaven is yours if you want it, if you want to submit your will to it. Do you want to submit your will to it, Mr. and Mrs. Garrett? Yes. Here it comes. It's falling on you right now. And so now, oh, hands above heaven, come. I see a hand coming from heaven. I see a hand coming from heaven. It's coming. I've asked angels to show up and bring a very message. And now I, that angel in me is going to touch you and fill you with the glory of heaven. And anyway, back to the sermon. Hallelujah, Dan. How you doing, bro? Good. He's running the camera. He's going, this is really good. So anyway, back to the... Ooh, fire. Sharate. Ho! Ho, sharate. God's killing him. Isn't it good? Is God killing him? Praise God. Don't worry. 
Rachel, something's breaking for your whole generation. Come on, James, huh? How you doing? Pretty good? How old are you? I hope Al's off the floor. <laughs> if you get text message, uh, we're taking him to the hospital. He's having convulsions. Praise God. Anyway. And they agreed with him. And when they all called for the apostles and beat them, isn't that amazing? They couldn't kill him, so they beat him. Really? The enemy's going to pound on you with everything he can. But if you never give up your will to the darkness and only surrender your will to Christ, you will come out in the power of God. Hmm. They beat him. And they commanded. I love that part. Now just think about this. The guy a few verses back said, if this is God, leave it be. Then they turn around and tell them not to do what God says to do. That's the enemy. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, the guys had to be disassociated or something. Split. Don't touch them. Don't kill them. This should be God, and we can't stop God. And then they turn around and say, hey, we command them to be quiet. Don't speak the name of Jesus. What? Come on. God used uh, their mouth, Gamil's mouth, and then he turns right around and beats them. And therefore, they got all worked up and excited over that. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were kind of worried they suffered shame for his name. They were repraising God because the enemy beat on them. And so they went away, and they hid like all American Christians from the power of the enemy, and they didn't say a word after that, right? No, they didn't. Daily. You hear it? Daily. Daily in the temple and in the house. They did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Messiah. Everything they told them to stop. Everything the enemy wants you to believe right now about yourself is you can't do enough, you're not good enough. You ready? It's by the grace of God. You're only here by the grace of God. You're only able even to enter in to worship by the grace of God. So this life that we have is a thing that God shows up on time. Something is a beginning to happen. See, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, Brandon, who's trying to lead a youth group with zero people. That's hard to do with zero people. Friday night, he had 12. And two that were supposed to be there couldn't come for, not because they didn't want to. So he went from zero to 14. See, look at what God is doing. Hey, Dan, turn that over to somebody else, would you? Now, if you come up, Eugene, will you come stand behind Dan, please? Could you? There's kind of a mess over here. Could you stand over here? Amen. Amen. Dan, have you paid a price? Uh, yes. Have you heard all the stuff out there about us? Oh, yes. And does it keep coming around and around? <laughs> <laughs> and and have, has, has family divided over it? Absolutely. Yes. Have they had any reason to? A good reason? Yeah. Okay. And so you, you are married, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. And, and you're one spirit with your wife? I am. And do you want? Do you want the will of God in your life? I do. Have you stood for a long time yes. wanting for the breakthrough? Yes. And has God been changing your life? Yes. 
Did the devil come with everything he had years ago, a few years ago, to destroy you? He did. But did God deliver you? He did. did he pull you out? He did. did he separate you out? Yes. Did he make you a leader? Yes. Did he want you back into worship? Yes. Does he want you the will of God in his life? Yes. Do you want that for your life? Do. do you want the glory? I do. This is, what I, th this is weird. I want you to ask for the glory in Spanish right now. Loud. More. And the glory shall be yours. Yes, Lord. You will preach it in the Spanish as well as English. Yes, Lord. This is what I heard. The Argentine anointing is about to fall yes, upon Lord. you. The Argentine yes, anointing that you were there and received and you walked away from. He said, do you want it back? I want it back. Tell him in Spanish. There'll be one church. Yes, Lord. One yes. spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Whew. You can clap. You can clap. You can clap. Hallelujah. That was good, huh? Yeah. These people are they're piglets. They're sucking the Holy Ghost in all around when it's around. They're snorting. Hi, hon. That day he spoke to you here when you didn't know what you were going to do with your life. He said, I already planned it. I planned it before you were born that you would be a major breakthrough in the generation of young ones who have been under the covering. And because of that generation thing be broken off of you, he says, I now am going to heal your spirit, man. I'm going to heal your body and your heart. I'm going to do a mighty thing over you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God. Whoa. Okay. Um, that's pretty fun, huh, Eugene? Okay. Hallelujah. I'm having a heck of a time driving this thing around. we got to get a motor on it. <laughs> Problem is, some of you drunk in the spirit pushed the wrong motor, and we have a casualty. A pulpit ran over a man at the altar. Hallelujah. May it be so. <laughs> I'm getting drunker and drunker and drunker and drunker. Is that a word? Drunker? Okay. Did you do something your mom? Okay. Well, I thought maybe you were mean to her again, Caitlin. So some of you are going, well, this is really nice, Pastor. I'm glad these people are having the time of their life. I got one set I got to do. I don't know where to stand them, though. Oh, I got a prophetic word as soon as I said. Could, could uh, Mr. Pastor Gleason and his wife come forward, please? Hi, Rachel. It's okay. I thought your daughter had offended you. Never? Oh, my God. All right. Could you stand right over here, Lisa? I'll catch you. <laughs> yeah, you'll catch you, I got you. Trust me. Come a little more 
forward? Could you grab hands? The Lord has called you out of retirement. <laughs> and when I heard right away, he said, um, you went to a place called Four looking for something. He said, now, because of your will to go after the Four, I'm going to give you the Four. <laughs> so he said, you've been on a long jury ever since you were at Four to come get the Four. And all along, I've been warming you in to this fight that you might understand the glory. And you've gone after it, and you've read it. And he says, but now I'm going to baptize you in the four of what your hearts are for. The four. He says, yes, the Caleb's and the Joshua's are going to come off the sideline to help those to understand the four. Do you want the four, Gleason's? Yes. <sighs> glory of heaven come. Baptize them in the fuller right now. I know my brother's heart. He wants the fuller. Oh, there it is. I see children standing around you. Little children. They're around you. Now they're going to sit before you. And you're going to release the curses off their lives. Because of the things that are being broken off of yours. In Jesus' name. Fire of heaven now baptize him. Cool beans. Keep getting him, get him, Joey. Get him. Get him good. <laughs> okay. See if God sent me a message. Yes, he did. He says, anybody here who has sat through this whole time are going, okay, this is nice. Why didn't you just do this in a leadership meeting? Because it's online. <laughs> that God says, be the first fruit of it. Those are in this room. Be the first fruit of the Shoshana glory. Being the first fruit, come forward and receive. Come forward and be healed, be set free, to be filled up, to know the will of God for your life. If you so desire that, Rachel, you can come forward. <laughs> and Eugene, Cute, don't get it. <laughs> you don't want it? Anyone else don't want it? It's open. You can take your shoes off. It makes you feel comfortable. <laughs> Just line up. Open your hearts. Was that good? It was wonderful, Pastor. I know. Makes you want to have a burrito, don't it? Oh, amen, man. <laughs> My mouth is watering right now. Thinking about burritos all morning. I'm not kidding. Oh, my God. That is so funny. If you only If you guys want to come up, you can come up. What are you going to do if you can't see her? Or you're going to spin her? Oh, you got issues? What's going on? Okay. Can't scratch it, huh? Okay. This is the deal. You heard what everything I was praying over people, okay? And this is the deal. It has to start and it runs down. I don't know why, but see, uh, Rachel, you're a worshiper and you like to worship, right? But how come you've never decided to come up front? All the way up front. <laughs> Why, he says. Caitlin, have you ever heard your mom sing at home? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does the cats howl? And the cat, yeah. No. <laughs> they don't howl, right? No. 
Not at all, right? Well, they're cousins. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we're cast that thing out of. <laughs> have you heard your daughter sing? Yes. Doesn't she have a beautiful yeah, voice? They all do. Yes. Mom. She yes. sings? Yes. She can sing, right? Jesus. But she hides, right? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. yeah. Your freedom will be here. Uh, your freedom will come. It's going to come because he said, I've given you a good heart. He said, because of the pain of your life, you've walked around and around. Hey, J.D., you want to come over around this guy? Come on, J.D. <laughs> J.D. grows a big beard, so he looks biblical. That's <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi J.D. That's scary. Rabbi Cryer. <laughs> Rabbi Cryer. You, want, you just want to be free of everything that's been behind you? Would that be fair? Just kind of give me a favor. Just kind of just close your eyes. Don't even think about anything. Father, he opened up to me, and it's between me and him and God. And he wants to be free of something. And may it begin. Ooh, may it begin right now. That which holds over his soul, I call it off of him right now. And I say now, he says, can I do it? The Lord said, no. Son, I want to do it for you by grace. I break that curse off of your life. I command darkness to go and be free. Now, Jesus, tell him. Tell him he doesn't have to go to that thing anymore. Tell him. Tell him to be free. Tell him he can be around family now and call in the house of God. Praise God. Put your hands out, girls. Put your hands out. Lord told me to do something like that. <laughs> you can trust me. I know more about you than you know yourself, right? <laughs> so don't even worry about it. He showed me something like this. He, now listen. This is where you've been. And you fight and you fight and you fight and you fight and you fight. But he says, today, I'm going to take off the veil then you're going to see me and you're going to serve me and the generations behind you and the grandchildren that are coming and all that's coming he says so when pastor pulls this off of your head there's going to be a baptism of freedom that comes over your spirit and all fear all doubt and everything that's ever been there is going to be gone in the name of Yeshua, Yeshua, Hakandiel, Yeshua, Maniyaho, Yalalalate, be free. There it goes. Whoa! Whoa! Fire! Shalalalalalate! Whoa! Shumbalate! Hallelujah! Huh? Oh! Thank you, Jesus. Hands on the tummy. Baptizer! Just say this with me. Thy will, Thy will be, done be done in my life. In my life. I, surrender. I surrender. And I give you glory. <laughs> there it goes. Sha la 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 te. Lay her down. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Take some glory right there. Woo! Sha la 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 panda la 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 te. Hey, you know, some people call this revival. But I don't. I call it Zion Christian Ministries and what we do here. In Jesus' name. Put your hands up, girl. You've walked out of darkness. You found out you're worth something. You found out you can be something. Do you want to surrender your will to God? Fill her. Don't look at me. 
Don't look at me. Look at him. There it is. <laughs> You're going to pee your pants. Oh, no. <laughs> I've never heard that at the altar. <laughs> Baptize her and keep her clean in Jesus' name. You feel that fire up down your body? That isn't that ain't pee. That's a fire of God. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been high on anything in your life? You want to be high on God for the rest of your life? Just God. Just God. You ready? Do it is. The things that come out of her mouth. She's honest. I'll be right back to you. Have you paid a price? You've seen dad here and mom here. You've had family go to heaven. You've had everything come against you that says you're never going to be the prophetess your mom called you to be. But see, it doesn't matter what mom called you to be. It's what I've called you to be, daughter. It's what I've called you. He says, I've given you long legs, but you can't outrun me. You can't outrun me, daughter. You can't outrun me. He said, why don't you just, just settle in and just let God have it. Let God have your will. Let him know he has plans for you. Let him know he's going to fulfill the promises. Because they've been delayed, they're not delayed. They're the timing of God. Now I release the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the fullness thereof. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory giver. Glory giver. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Lord, um, you come back on a white horse. I remember the time I visited Sister in, uh, in ICU. Mm -hmm. uh, she thought she should be doing barrel racing in Susanville <laughs> and uh, broke a few ribs and about died. Mm -hmm. But God, you saved her. Yes. He says, um, the church needs grandmas. The church needs women who know the things of life and guide them out. So he says, today I'm going to fill you with my Holy Spirit. There it is. Oh my. And now baptize her in her call. Because he says, one day you're going to ride a horse with me. <laughs> Because I know how much you love to grab a horse by the face and look into their eyes and see the strength and the freedom and the power in them. So he says, now I'm going to have you look in my eyes and see the strength and the power that's in me. And back. Hey, did you go pee? No. <laughs> Man of God. Warrior of God. You know what it means to lay your life down on a battlefield. You know. But he said, the battlefield I'm calling you to, you're always going to win in. Because I got your life in my hands. I'm going to begin to do some restoration and gifting in you that you never thought you had. You say, I'm not good enough to teach. I'm not good enough. He said, I am going to bring those broken men to you. And you're going to love them man to man. So he says, you got to submit your will. And here it comes. Whoa. Whew. What spirit you shall be. Yes, Lord. It's what you both have been asking for in your lives. And I have given it to you. Yes. Fire of heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, 
we got freedom over here. And you won't be alone. I break the spirit of loneliness off of you right now in Jesus' name. Has it been a battle to get here, girl? Is it hard sometimes to submit a will knowing that you could be broken and hurt again right here? He says, so don't trust the pastor who's praying for you. Trust the Spirit of God and me, the Father in heaven, as my son comes to touch you. Release your glory, Father. Now baptize her in the Shoshana glory of God. There it is. I don't know why you need glasses. I don't know why. He said, take the glasses off of her. Close your eyes now. I know why. As soon as I turned around, he told me why. He said, close your eyes, daughter. Quit looking about to see where you're accepted and not accepted. Quit looking around and wondering in your heart. He said, because you already are. So I want you to take off the glasses that you think you see with, and I want you to see what I say to you in my spirit. Whew. There it is. He says, now, get ready, because I'm going to show you, you can't be more accepted than what I have accepted. You can't be more loved than what I love. You can't be more than what you think you can be for someone else that you would be okay. He said, no, 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 no. You already are. So he said, I had that man take the glasses off of you so that you would not look anymore through the eyes of man, but you'll look through the eyes of me. Now be received the baptism of thy holiness in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. First Father, for my brother's eye, I ask that you, I'm going to put my hand on your face. I'm not going to touch your eye, though. We ask healing to come over his eye. But maybe it might be that he says, do not believe what you see with your eyes, but believe what you hear in your heart. For your eyes have betrayed you. And they have blinded you to me. So therefore, from this day forward, I cleanse your eyes to see only that what God wants you to see. And I break the curse over your eyes then put there. And the eyes bring you to feelings, and the feelings are not of me. Therefore, I break it right now in the name of Christ Jesus. And now may the healing come over his eyes by the Holy Spirit within. And may the power of the living God come and release the glory within. And now may everything that he thinks he has to do to be free be broken by one word, grace. 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 May that mountain be removed in Jesus' name. Keep praying, guys. 